So how does a 2014 MacBook Pro base model perform in 2023? Let's find out. Welcome back to the channel. I'm in a different spot, right? It won't be like this for a long time. I'm just doing one video like this to mix it up and I'm gonna go back to my normal set. All right, let's get into the video. So I bought this 2014 base model, eight gigs of RAM, uh, MacBook Pro down here with the Retina display, 13 inch for $127. I made a video on that. You can check out my channel on how I got that. Now, obviously, spoiler alert, it came with, it's just perfect condition. I'll show you some close-ups, but really it's just it had a broken microphone on it, but you can plug in a USB microphone just fine and it works perfect. So overall, it's a really good deal, 127 bucks. How does it perform today in 2023 with basic applications, basic you know word processing, things like that? Can you do day-to-day -day stuff on this, video conference calls? How does it perform? That's what we're gonna find out today. Now, spoiler alert again, if you're a power user or an extreme gamer, this is not for you. But can you get by with this if this is all you have for your budget, 127 bucks, 150 bucks, somewhere in there, and you want Mac OS? Let's find out. Um, you know, I guess we'll just start with kind of the list that we're gonna go through. I'm gonna go through, I think, it's like eight or nine different categories, and I'm gonna tell you exactly how this performs in them. For example, like during word processing, is this okay? During video editing, is this okay? What's the boot time? I'm gonna go through those categories for you. So sit back and relax, and let's just kind of break this down. How good is this thing in 2023? All right, category number one, boot time. And I'm not gonna waste your time. 27 seconds this thing takes to load. So from the time I turn it on to the time I can put my password in, it's 27 seconds. I'm on Big Sur as far as Mac OS. That's the latest version I can upgrade this to. We'll get into that in a second. So if you're wondering boot time, that's not that bad, 27 seconds. Some more modern Macs take longer, actually pretty good. All right, category number two is gonna be how long does it take to load apps? Are you waiting forever to, for, a, for an app to load? Or are you just sitting there waiting for it for 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 30 seconds? Let's find out. I'm gonna share my screen down here. So here I have a couple common apps. Here's pages right here. So let's go ahead and click on it. One, two, three. So I clicked on it. You can see down here it took just one or two bounces. It opened up. So just two or three seconds there on pages. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut down pages like that. Now we're gonna go down to something different down here. Let me go ahead and we're gonna open up Keynote right here. You can see at the bottom it's not open right now. Um, or it's not, there's no little bubble on it, so it's not open currently. So let's go ahead and click on this. One, two, three. As you can see, one bounce there, it opened up. So it's actually surprisingly really fast. And this is just the base model with eight gigs of RAM. I don't know why it's so fast here, but it really is. And let's go ahead and just try one last thing. Safari is very common. So one, two, click. One bounce, two bounce, two bounces. Safari loads right up. Look at that. So super quick, super responsive for a 2000, what, 14, 10 year old computer. Not bad on loading applications. All right, so can you actually use this for internet browsing very easily? Does it bog down? Does it take a long time for pages to load? I know that's the internet connection, but also the computer. So let's find out. I'm going to show you right here. If we look down here, here's Safari. It's open. I'm going to click on Google right there. It takes two seconds to open up. Look how fast that is. I'm going to type in news and click enter. Things and pages load super quickly. Look how responsive everything is. So very, very well. You know, everything works really good on the internet. I'm going to go ahead and click on, I guess, Fox News here, the first one that came up. So we'll see how long this takes to actually load. So it's taking a couple, a little bit longer than obviously maybe that we're used to, but it does come in pretty quickly. All the graphics are loading in here. Some some things take a little bit longer, as you can see, but overall the experience has been really good. I mean, when you get into different stories, obviously Fox News has different stories that are going to actually have, you know, videos behind them and they're going to automatically load like this one's trying to. But beyond that, all the stories and everything here load really quickly. So overall, it hasn't been, you know, a bad experience. It's going to be a little bit slower than the new systems, obviously, even with the fast internet connection for sure. But overall, not too bad. And I, and I totally, you know, it's, it's totally usable in this day and age, as long as you have a good internet connection, so this totally passes that. All right, so for this next test, can this thing do word processing? If you just need to write some letters and stuff, you know the answer probably, but let's just take a quick peek here. So here's the, the desktop. I'm gonna go ahead and open pages, one, two, three, click on it. You can see it bounces like it did before a couple times, and then it's gonna open up the site here. I'm gonna double click on the blank page here, and everything should be fairly responsive, but again, you can notice it's got a couple second delay there, so it's gonna be slower than like an M1 or something. This is only a test, but I mean, obviously you get the idea here. I mean, anything, this thing you want to do in here, once you get into here, if you want to bold things and move things around, do different titles, everything's going to be responsive, super responsive. I mean, there's nothing you can do in here, you know, differently than you can do in a new system. It's going to be very similar. 
I mean, you can go ahead and paste things in really quickly as fast as you can, change letterheads, do all the kind of things, edit different documents. It all works just really well in here. So that's not even a problem either. Obviously in a 2014 pages works pretty good. And again, this is, I'm using Big Sur, so it's up to that version. Pages is maybe not the most current version of pages, but it's, it's Big Sur pages, which is I think a couple of versions earlier. Still works perfect though. All right, the next test, can you use this for video conferencing? How does it look? How does it feel? Let me just show you. Hold on one second, I'm gonna share my screen here and then we'll get into that. All right, you can see it right here. So if you're gonna be using this for video conferencing, this is about what it's gonna look like here. I'm a little bit delayed, you can see on my voice and stuff, but overall not bad quality. I'm in a little bit of shadow with my hat here. It's looking up at me, which is not the most flattering, but you can see the picture quality. It's not bad at all. You can definitely get away with using this for video conferencing. It's not too jerky at all, works perfectly fine. All right, so video editing. Can you video edit on this? Let me just, spoiler alert, 1080p for sure. This thing works great for 1080p, no problem whatsoever. Can you do 4K? Take a look at my screen here. This is a 4K video right here. I've loaded it in iMovie. Let's just see how it kind of scrubs. So if I'm gonna be moving in here, look at the upper right-hand corner. You can see everything scrubs very smoothly in here. Now, when you go through some transitions, you're gonna have some issues, you know, a little bit of kind of dropping frames here. You can see through like these kind of transitions and stuff, but not bad at all. And the scrubbing works fine. I've used this when I'm traveling and stuff. The experience is really good. So it's actually really good. Now, overall though, you know, let me just show you a couple. I'm gonna show you a graph here. So do you recommend this like above something like an M1? Obviously not or an M2. I have an M1 system I put this head to head against and I rendered, I think it was like a, let me just see, I forget the name, it was like a five minute video roughly that I rendered, it was the video I just showed you. It took basically on the M1 about two minutes and 30 seconds to render that out. And this one, the computer right here, the 2014 took about 18 minutes or so. So it takes like seven times as long. But if you're doing a five minute video and it takes 18 minutes, you know, and you can get away with that, this can do it. And I think this is H.264 video 4K. So not too bad, it can actually do it, but it's not the best experience when you're getting into newer systems and you have to wait that time. But if you have time to wait just to do that, you know, not, not so much the scrubbing, but the rendering, this is actually a good system for that. I mean, it works in a pinch, you can definitely do it. And then 1080p, it just you know, flies through. Can you do graphic design in this now? That's the next question. Well, it depends what you use. I mean, I'm gonna say this is not perfect again, but let's say you wanna use something like Keynote, which is on my screen right here, you can see it. Obviously, there's gonna be nothing that you can't really do here quickly. So I'm just adding shapes and stuff like this. I'm moving things around. Look how responsive everything is. So obviously when you're doing things like this, I mean, I'm, I'm just showing you some really basic stuff, obviously. But you can do any, it's just, it's more or less just like word processing, right? You can't do super high-end stuff where you're trying to go through millions of different pictures. It's gonna take a long time in this. But if you wanna create simple documents like I'm showing you here, and you wanna just add text and pictures and import maybe photos and stuff, something like Keynote works perfect on this. You can see how fast it loaded earlier. It takes just a couple seconds. Nothing in here is gonna just, you know, be, be really a chore to work with. I mean, you can move things around. There's no, again, stuttering. Nothing, you know, when you type text in it, just types in instantly. So you're not dealing with a lot of that issues that you would on like a really old Windows system. So yeah, you can definitely do graphic artists, just basic stuff. But if you're doing it like on Keynote and stuff, it works perfectly. When you get into Photoshop and stuff like that, you are gonna run in some more issues as far as load times and stuff. It's not gonna be as, as easy, you know, and I don't recommend the system for that, but just basic kind of graphics and stuff, it still works perfect if you use kind of the Mac programs that are integrated into the, into the OS. Now people always ask me, can, this, can you do basic emailing with this? Of course you can, all right? I showed you how responsive the, the browsing was and I use Gmail. So something, something an old computer like this, I always try to tend to use programs like Gmail or video, you know, different things like that where you're not so much using the resources of the computer, but you're using the internet, your speed of the internet helps with that. So, I mean, if you're worried about just sending and receiving emails even through Apple Mail, like the program built into this, or if you're just using, you know, Gmail online, this has got no problem whatsoever and you won't even notice a difference between this and something like an M1. It's perfectly smooth, perfectly fine, and you'll have no problems whatsoever. All right, what about just bringing up maps? Let's say you wanna use this for just basic navigation, all right? Take a look here. I loaded maps here. You can see some of the older systems would bog down. It would take a long time for the maps to load just because the data had a crunch in there. But look at this, if I take it and drag it, I mean, there's a little bit of you know pausing or a little stuttering there, but I can move it all around pretty quickly. You can do anything you wanna do as far as navigation. So I'm mean, again, I'm just going through basic stuff that you might be doing on a system like this and maps and looking up where a location is is one of them. It works perfect, obviously. You can see it right here. All right, the next category is late gaming, and I'm not gonna get too much into this, but this is not a gaming system, right? You can do something barely. You can do stuff like Minecraft. I think you're gonna get between 30 and 40 frames per second, depending on the settings. In CSGO, something like that, you're gonna get that 30 to 40 frames per second, unless you're in a really rough part of the, the map. 
and it might go down from there. And again, that's going to be pretty basic settings. So if you're okay with that, or you're like, you know, playing cards and stuff like that, this will work fine on. So if you like those type of games, this is going to be okay. If you like any of the newer titles, if you like anything like Fortnite and stuff like that, this is not for you. You might get by in some of the games like old, old, like Dirt 1 and stuff where you're going to get like 30 frames per second, maybe. This is just not the right system for that. You're just going to have an overall bad experience of gaming is your main reason for this. But if you want to just do some light stuff, solitary and stuff, and pick up these little games you can play, you know, pick them up and play them off the Apple Store and stuff, they'll work fine there. But overall, it's not for that. All right, OS compatibility and app compatibility. This is one thing I wanted to talk about. This is kind of the most, I guess, the biggest negative here. So this can only be upgraded, I believe, to Big Sur. And uh, let me just go into about the Mac. So I upgraded this to Big Sur 11.7.8. Now this version here is gonna actually, it's still got the security updates, believe it or not, but it only is until December, I think, somewhere in December of this year, 2023, then you lose those, all right? So if you're somebody that actually knows what you're doing here and you're okay with security and stuff, and you know you're, you just know what you're kind of doing, it might be a good system for you. But if you want, you know, security is really important to you. I mean, this is going to lose those security updates pretty soon. That's the thing to think about, all right? Now, if you're someone that's going to be savvy, though, and you know Open Core, Legacy Open Core uh, Patcher, which is basically allows you to take a Mac like this and upgrade it past Big Sur, you can actually upgrade this probably to Ventura and beyond. That might be an option for you, but you have to be tech savvy there and know how to do that. That's for another video. And that's what a lot of people buy these for. They'll do that. And then obviously they'll put the newer OSs on them. But they probably will run a little bit slower because those new OSs are going to demand a little bit more resources. So you got to kind of weigh those options there. All right, so let's wrap this up. So what I recommend this to someone that wants to go out and buy it right now in 2023. I'm going to say yes and no, all right? If you're someone like me that likes to fool around with some of the older tech and you want, you know, maybe a, a laptop you can take to travel, you don't want to get have it stolen on you, you can take this with you. You're going to be able to do emailing, all the things I just showed you, some small video conferencing, emailing, word processing. You know, you have to make a little sign or something, some little, you know, uh, word um, you know, graphic arts and stuff. You can make a movie if you wanted to. You know, you can upload a movie in a pinch. It's going to take a lot longer to render it though. So that's perfect for that kind of a person. And if you know like Open Core Legacy Patcher, you can, you're able to do that. You can you know, upgrade this to a newer version of it, all right? But if you're someone that is looking for security and you just are not familiar with the whole Mac OS system and those type of kind of, I mean, those obviously if you don't know what you're doing to load um, the legacy patcher on, which is kind of an extra thing, you got to be tech savvy again to do that, then this probably may not be for you because you're going to lose the security updates pretty soon and you may not be that happy with it. If you're a gamer, this is not for you. And if you're a hardcore kind of graphic artist or you're a hardcore video ed you know, editor and you do 4K edits for a living and stuff, this is not for you as well, all right? You're not going to be happy with this at all. So obviously, though, it just comes down to you, you have to make the right choice. If you have more than, a, if, if that's all you have is 127 bucks, this might be right for you, even if you do the video editing. If you have more money, I would go with like the M1, even M1 Mac, Mac Mini, which is like $499. You can get the M1 MacBook Air brand new for $750, but you can get it used probably for $400 now or $450, somewhere in that range if you find the right one. So overall, I think you just have to know what you're getting into here. And you know if you're spending $127, this is what you get. Now, is this better than a $127 uh, Windows PC or a $127 Chromebook? I would say for sure it absolutely outperforms those from what all my testing has done and just real world use and stuff like that. So if that's what you're thinking the options are, this might be a good option for you, but it's that security updates that you got to be a little bit, you know, weary of coming up. And that's all I can really say on this. So I want to wrap this up. I hope this makes a lot of sense. Just wanted to show people if you're thinking about this, you know, what are the things you want to get into and get out of? Obviously, you just got to think about a lot of different things here and then make your decision at the end of the day. So we'll talk to you soon until the next video. Peace.